Hey everyone, how's it going? I wanted to kind of give you an overview of a side project I've been working on and I think this is a pretty cool side project that I would like to share with you all and maybe start a new series where I do like vlog based videos and show you the features that I add over the weeks. Um, but basically I'm trying to build a Minecraft server hosting uh, system. I don't want to say a company because I'm not really sure if I plan to make money off of this, but it would be nice if I do. But basically I want to build a website where people can come on, they can create an account, and rent out Minecraft servers every month. So this is what I currently have, and I'll kind of walk you through the UI and show you a overview, and maybe talk a little bit about the technical side. But before I go further, be sure to click that bell icon and subscribe button if you want to get notified when I post another vlog type of video, which will be part of this Minecraft hosting series. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is the UI I currently have. I do plan to maybe like refactor this in down the road or maybe find someone who can actually do more design and make this look good. But this is the UI that I have. It has basically a hero banner. It has some features that I don't actually have implemented and then a bottom footer with links that don't really go anywhere. So that's the kind of the start of my UI. But the main thing I want to show you is you can actually log in and create an account and rent a Minecraft server. So if I were to go to rent a server here, it takes you to another page where you have a selection of different sizes, right? So the way the Minecraft hosting community works is they charge you per gigabyte because Minecraft ends up using a lot of memory depending on how many players you have on your server. So if you have a small server, a personal server with maybe one or two friends, you might be able to get away with one gigabyte. But if you have, let's say 10, 20, 30 users, you're gonna have to get a lot more memory. So let's just select the smallest one here. I'll do like wood, or maybe we can do stone just so it loads a little bit quicker. So I'll do stone and click select and that's going to take you to a page where you can actually register and like create a uh, create an account and then also provide a credit card. Let me move my head so you can see the credit card. All right, so let's just go ahead and type in like bob1 at example.com and I'm just going to go ahead and create an account. And just put a, a, a bogus address in here and a bogus credit card number. I am using Stripe by the way, so this is integrated with Stripe, although I have a lot of the Stripe code kind of commented out so I can just rapidly prototype. I do plan to come back and actually make sure this works with Stripe so people can actually pay. But notice here, if you type in 4242 and then continue that, that's kind of like a bogus credit card that allows Stripe to kind of progress to the next step. So once they've entered their information, they can click purchase your server. That's gonna hit my backend API, which is just written with Express in TypeScript. By the way, this UI is written in TypeScript in React using Create React App, and I'm trying to just keep it simple. I'm just using Context API to kind of share some state if needed, um, and then prop drilling, drilling wherever else I need. So once you actually rent the server, so your credit card payment goes through, that hits the back end, and then we actually create a record in a database. So what's really happening behind the scenes is I have different servers, I'm calling them nodes, which these Minecraft servers can run on, right? So right now I have a computer downstairs, has like eight uh, cores and like 16 gigabytes of memory, but it's a Debian instance that just basically has an agent running. The agent is just going to query this API and say, hey, give me a list of all the Minecraft servers I'm supposed to be running. And if it sees a new entry added, it's going to then use Docker, host up a new Minecraft server so that the users can actually join and play with it. And then, uh, yeah, that's about it. So if you go over here, we have our server. A lot of this stuff is hard coded. I want to actually work on allowing people to have a, um, a custom subdomain. Also the port I think is hard coded here. And then I want people to be able to name their server if they want to. But right now, um, let's just click view and kind of view this server. So what you're seeing now is like the server dashboard overview where you have some commands that might be really useful for a user. So restarting, turning it off, turning it back on, and then ending your subscription if you're done paying for the server. Um, I can kind of show you some of the other stuff. We do have, I do plan to have like a configure page where you can actually change the settings of the server. So it turns out in Minecraft, you can just kind of change this dot properties file and you can just like modify the settings. But I wanted to build a nice user interface um, for the users to be able to kind of edit those and just have like drop downs for stuff that has specific values that need to be filled in. And then they can click save and that'll basically update their properties file. And I think you might have to restart the Minecraft server afterwards. So maybe I'll have like a save and restart button here. But who knows? And the last thing I want to kind of show is this terminal. So this is like the coolest feature. This is actually creating a WebSocket connection to that agent that's downstairs in my uh, 
on my desktop computer. And the agent is actually forwarding log messages of the Minecraft server to this terminal. So you can see here the server was like started, it started spinning up the spawn area, and then it finished and it says that it can't keep up. I think sometimes this happens when the server first loads. Like if your computer isn't powerful enough to run Minecraft, you'll get a bunch of these. So hopefully that's just like a one-time thing. Um, but yeah, so the server is actually running and I want to show you that I can actually connect to it. So if I go back and figure out what port this is running on, um, so 25565, I can actually go and load up Minecraft and connect to it. So let's try to do that. All right, so Minecraft is finally loaded. It took a while because my laptop's not the fastest, but I can actually connect to that desktop that's downstairs. This is the internal IP. And if I change this to 25565, click join. Um, sometimes it fails the first time you try to connect. I don't really know why this happens. Maybe the server has to like initialize something. But if I go back to the terminal, we should see it say that I tried to join. Or actually, maybe it doesn't even work the first time. Let's see. All right, so that's expected, at least from what I've seen the first time you try to connect to the server. I don't know if this Mac instance of Minecraft just has a bug or if my server is actually initializing something because it's saying that connection was lost from a user. So it's like I tried to join, but my server just kicked them off. But usually when I try it again, it lets me in instantly. So I'm not sure if the server has to like do something and initialize something for the first player who joins. By the way, if anyone plays Minecraft and kind of can explain if that's a normal behavior or not, let me know. But yeah, so now we're actually in the server. So this is the server that was created via the UI and we can actually walk around. It's a little laggy right now because my computer is not that good, but you can go ahead and just, you know, destroy some blocks. And this is so laggy. So it's not the server that's laggy, it's my actual CPU on my laptop that's trying to like render this stuff. So you're gonna have to give it some time. But just trust that it's working. You can also do some cool stuff like inside the terminal here, I can go ahead and type in help to get a list of all the serv server commands. And I could basically send out a message, I could teleport someone, I could change the weather, I could stop the server. And just to kind of show you that these other commands work, let's just go ahead and start the server. So I'm gonna to go to overview. And if I click stop here, that's actually gonna change a record in the database. And after a, you know, a short interval, the agent that's running downstairs my desktop is going to see that I told the server that it should be off. And that should kick me off of the Minecraft server. So let's click stop. And that'll change this to offline. And if I go back, we got kicked out of the server. So to kind of also further demonstrate that, um, I do have some terminals here, and this is actually SSH into that desktop computer that's downstairs. So we have the agent running downstairs, which is basically listening for connections. Um, and then when someone says create a server, it's going to basically create a Docker container and spin it up and create a, a folder that has all that Minecraft information in it. Right, so if I were to go ahead and just spin the server back up, um, you'll see that the terminal after some time will start printing more messages and we can connect to it again. All right, there we go. Server starting back up. It takes a little bit of time to actually initialize the world so that I can rejoin. But yeah, this is kind of what I have so far for my little side project. If you have, um, I'm trying to figure out like where to take it next. I just want to keep on like making sure that the performance is good and that the resiliency is good because Obviously writing all this stuff by hand, it's, you know, very error prone and could have a lot of bugs. But so far it's working pretty cool. Um, the next steps, I kind of want to like work on this configure page where someone can kind of just type in the configuration and save it and restart their server. And I could see that configuration change on the server. And then also I want to go back to the server list and I want to make sure that this stuff is actually configurable and not hard coded. Like the max number of players, how many players are in the server. Just some of the small stuff that would be cool if it actually had live data. Uh, yeah, also if I am currently a user, I can go back and click rent a server and I can actually, you know, spin up a new server here. Right now it's really basic. I'm assuming that the Stripe is going to store your credit card information in your source ID. And once you've already created an account and bought a server, we already have that information stored on Stripe. So I can just click buy and I'm assuming that this will just work and then I can kind of spin up a new server. So if I click buy here, that'll actually spin up another server. And if I go to that terminal that I showed you before, um, I could show you that now there are probably two Docker containers running. I got one of them that's running with two gigs 
and the other one that's running with um, one gig, and they're also on different ports. So the one I just created is on port 66, and the other one's on port 65. Yeah, so if you uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment below if you have a cool feature you think I should add to this little application. And then like always, if you're new to this channel, click that subscribe button because I'm gonna have other videos like this in this series where I can kind of demo and kind of walk you through the features I add over time to this Minecraft server hosting system. Also, maybe I'll get some code walkthroughs of like how some of this stuff works, maybe give some high level diagrams to kind of dive into the code and how the architecture is set up. If that's interesting to you, Anyway, cool. Thanks for watching and happy coding.